Hi, Professor Gronlin here. Let's talk gram stains. Even people who have never taken a microbiology course before may have heard of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So it must be a big deal, right? Yep, it is. Turns out that most bacteria construct their cell walls in one of two ways, and it turns out that the type of construction causes a difference between which antibiotics will work best, what their susceptibility to disinfectants will be, what type of toxins they make, which results in different kinds of symptoms, etc. So yeah, gram staining is a big deal because it lets you see which of the two types of constructions the bacteria use in their cell walls. It's always kind of interesting to know who came up with these discoveries and why. I think that history really brings out the fact that science is truly an international endeavor where one development leads to the next development. In this case, back in the 1880s, Hans Christian Graham, a Danish scientist, was looking for a way to see the difference between the bacteria causing a lung infection and the nuclei of the lung cells. Not only did he figure that out, but inadvertently, the procedure he developed allowed scientists to visualize the difference between bacteria based on these different types of cell wall constructions. You can think about the cell wall construction sort of like building your house out of brick or building it out of wood with siding over the top. Some bacteria use a thick layer of peptidoglycan and other bacteria use a thinner layer of peptidoglycan with a lipid membrane surrounding that. Don't you love that word, peptidoglycan? Just kind of rolls off the tongue. As a bonus, it tells you exactly what it's made of. Glycan refers to chains of sugars. You've probably heard of glycogen and know that it's just a chain of glucose molecules. The peptido refers to peptide, a short chain of amino acids. So, peptidoglycan is chains of sugars attached to each other with short chains of amino acids. Gram-positive cells construct thick layers of peptidoglycan for their walls, while the gram-negative cells make thinner layers of peptidoglycan and surround that with an outer lipid membrane. The gram stain is considered a differential stain because the color tells you which of those two types of constructions that bacteria is using. The thick layers of peptidoglycan in gram positive bacteria result in purple cells while the structure of the gram negative results in pink cells. For a gram stain, you will want to start with a young culture. About 18 to 24 hours old works best. Older cultures, especially gram-positive bacillus, will sometimes give inaccurate results. If you like to draw a target circle on your slides for applying the bacteria, it will need to be done in wax pencil or with a permanent marker on the underside of the slide because we'll be using an ethanol rinse during this procedure. As with most staining procedures, you will start with a smear. So spread a thin layer of bacteria on a clean slide, allow it to completely air dry, and then heat fix it. For the gram stain, you will first flood the slide with the primary stain, crystal violet, allow it to stand for one minute, and then gently but thoroughly rinse the slide. Tap off any excess water and flood the slide with Graham's iodine. Allow it to stand one minute and then gently but thoroughly rinse. If you are making several slides, you can do these steps all at the same time. Let's step back and see what has happened to the bacteria so far. The crystal violet has attached to the peptidoglycan in the cell walls of both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. The iodine is used as a mordant, meaning that it makes the crystal violet complexes larger. If you stopped right now, all of the cells would be purple and you would not be able to tell one type of cell from the other. This next step is the key to the differentiation. You need to do the step one slide at a time. Have 95% ethanol 
and a rinse bottle ready. Quickly rinse the ethanol over the slide only until it's clear. This should take only a few seconds. Rinse with water immediately. Now let's step back and see what has happened to those bacteria. The ethanol on the gram-positive bacteria made that thick layer of peptidoglycan dehydrate and shrink, essentially sealing the crystal violet into the wall. On the other hand, the first thing the ethanol touched on the gram-negative bacteria was the lipid membrane. And since lipids are soluble in 95% ethanol, that membrane will just dissolve away, exposing that thin layer of peptidoglycan, which can't retain that crystal violet, so it's washed away too. Essentially, this leaves colorless cells, which of course you would not be able to see under the microscope. A counterstain of safranin applied for one minute before rinsing colors those gram-negative cells pink. Of course, the safranin also stained the gram-positive cells, but the stronger crystal violet color will still be predominant. Now you just need to gently blot the slides dry and view them under oil immersion on the microscope. This stain will allow you to differentiate the bacteria based on their cell wall structure. The thick layers of peptidoglycan make gram-positive bacteria purple, and the thin layers of peptidoglycan with that outer lipid membrane make the gram-negative pair pink. Of course, the stain has also allowed you to determine the cell morphology and cell arrangement. I wonder if old Hans realized that his staining procedure would still be one of the most important stains used in microbiology 140 years later. Work safe and happy staining!